Okay, so everyone can see this here. So, so this, this essentially was, this essentially here is our in intro sentence analysis. <clears throat> and so then what I wanted you to try is I want you to try the inter sentence. So looking at relationships, okay? First off, how many how many sentences or how many major points did you have? Or where was where was the separation? Someone give to me how did you separate out these verses? Just someone can tell me where I should space this. Where do you have a space? So I'm, I'm, I'm at the first step, remember, is to make independent sentences. Where is, where is the, the, the spacing? Someone want to tell me? So the first one, I appeal to you, therefore, then. Uh, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers. That's one. That's one. Then separate by the mercies of God. Then separate. Okay. Now, are these all the way to the left or are they indented? Are they indented or all the way to the left? To present your bodies as living sacrifice. It's the same line with by. Okay. The message would not to present holy and acceptable to God. Then another, another, uh, which is your spiritual worship. See. That's how it's separated. Good. Okay, that, that's, re that's, that's really good, Henry. I, I like it. I would just, the, the one change I would make here is I would indent this one more. And the reason for doing that is, let me just first make this. The reason why I would do that is because, is because uh, this here, This is modifying this idea of if that makes sense, which is your reasonable service is this idea of presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice. Actually, you could actually, you could actually, let me just, um, You could actually do that as well. So the witch, the witch is describing the whole thing. The idea of presenting your body as a living sacrifice. Is everyone tracking with me what's going on there? Does that make sense? The spiritual worship is the whole idea of presenting the body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Great. No, that's good. Henry, I like it. That's good. That's a good job. Okay. Um, the next space, so someone else, so someone else give to me, how did you break out the second verse? Someone else want to try? Uh, do not be confined to this world. Okay. And then that's the, the main and the next is but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Great. Then that, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. Now is that left or is that indented? Indented. Uh, good. Good. And uh, what is good and acceptable and perfect? Indented also. Now do you want to indent it one more time or leave it parallel like this? I think uh, it should be parallel. The okay. Those are hanging. Ah, okay. What is good and acceptable and perfect? Okay. That, yeah, that's so, my. Yeah, yeah. So that's possible. That's possible, Danny. Um. Yeah, be, it, it depends on how you understand the relationship. It depends on how you understand this and this. It, 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 this relationship. How you how you de de determine that. 
if if you're looking at these as being equivalent one and two that's fine if you view if you're viewing this as clarifying that you should indent it one more time okay okay yeah that the one is clarifying what is good and acceptable and perfect is clarifying the okay. will of god Great. Okay, so then what we want to do is we just want to indent it one more time. All right, who wants to try the – oh, that, that's it. I'm sorry. I, I, had, it, I had it done. I, I, this is extra. It's not it's the same one. So we just move that out of the way. Okay, great. Okay, so this is it. This is it. All right, okay, so let me just, let me just delete this now. All right, so, so then we really have how many major ideas, how many major points – are we gonna probably have? Does someone else want to try? I think two. Yes, great. So we'll have. I'll work on the right side for right now. So we're going to have. One major point. That that's what I'm thinking it's gonna be. Okay, uh, and, and and so. Um, to have that blueprint, it's very helpful, all right? Now, um, looking at, because we've already broken these other things down up here, we've already broken them out, okay? So what we're, we're, we're gonna do now is we're looking at this, we're gonna look at this as one, We're looking at this as one idea here. What is that one idea? Tell me, tell me what do you think that one main idea is and what is your basis for that? Living sacrifice. Go ahead, Dave, re 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 repeat it. Living sacrifice. Oh, okay. Um, so that's that that's good that's the that's the goal that's the goal of the sentence that's where the sentence move, is moving towards um but let, maybe let, let me rephrase the question so what i am asking for is diba we're looking two things in this in, in the so this right here is a this is a now this is an inter sentence now we're looking at inter sentence and specifically, first, we're looking at number one, we're looking at the type of sentence, right? We're looking at the type of sentence, and so my question is, Danny, or for anyone, anyone else can jump in here, what is that main, what is this main type of sentence? What do you want to call it? It's an appeal. Yeah, okay. Great, Kaya, great. Uh, it, it's, you, you could call it an appeal. You could call it a, a, or a, a request. Entreaty, entreaty. Yeah, or you could call it an entreaty. Yeah, that's great. Exhortation. Oh, it's so, 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 uh, let, let me, let me, hold on, let me, um, hold on here. So, Sonny, was this, was exhortation the one that you're saying was not in my list? Sonny? Uh, yes. Yeah, no, great, great, great question and observation. So, so, yeah, so exhortation yeah, let me think about that. I mean, I, I, I really like it. I really like exhortation. And um, I went back and forth. I went back and forth uh, thinking about including this on my, and, and maybe I will, maybe I will. We are talking to, uh, about, we, are, we are studying here, uh, we are working here for inter sentence and a team. Yeah. Yeah, so, yes, inter-sentence, yes, inter-sentence, we're, we're identifying the type of sentence right now before we do, before we do the outline, okay?
Okay, so, so we're looking at what's this big idea here. So, Sonny, I like exhortation. Exhortation has the idea. It depends on how you're defining it, Sonny, because exhortation, there's a word for exhortation in Greek, and there's also, um, yeah, so I do like, I do like, because it's really what I'm yeah. highlighting. Go ahead. I, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I observe or I term it exhortations because uh, of the uh, changing of the topic where Paul now focusing on the topic of how should a already Christian live in, you know, you know, after, after he, he, he talked about all those doctrines from chapter 1 to chapter 11. And then in chapter 12, he now jumped into the practicality of yeah. all those all this doctrines, doctrinal issues, or doctrinal you know, treaties that, that Apostle Paul um, mentioned in chapter 1 to chapter yeah. 11. So, yeah, I, so that's why I... I no, no, no. It, and and, and it's, a great, it's, a great, it's a great observation, Sonny. And, and I'm not... No, I, I think it's a great observation what you're saying. I'm just thinking about, it depends on how you define exhortation because I do think in using the word exhortation, exhortation be becomes very close to here. These are very close, right? Um, so th these are all very close approximations. It depends on how you define exhortation, okay? So... As long as we're understanding, as long as we're understanding that Paul is requesting, appealing. Yeah, so that's why you could say appeal. He's requesting um, on the basis of this, this would be the basis, although some people would say it's, it's the means. So you, we can, but. But, but, but he's, he's requesting us to do this. To present. Okay. To present. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so any one of these four words, I think we're all very close to what, what, what the idea is. As long as we're understanding is Paul is begging, Paul is requesting, Paul is appealing for us to do something. And the thing that we're to do is we're to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Okay? Is everyone tracking with me there? All right. Any questions or comments before we go on? Is that making sense? Does that make sense? Pastor Tim, uh, yes. Pastor Sonny's, this, uh, what you call this description, exhortation, yeah. really, uh, it really goes well because uh, it's here in the Webster, Miriam Webster Dictionary. Yeah. Um, it's an urgent appeal, and another is emphatically urging someone to do something. So it's very heavy. So I think yeah. it defines, yeah, it defines the the verse. No, so that's that's good. That's really good. Just give me one second here. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's why that's why I was saying that it depends on how we define. Where did this go? It depends on how you define exhortation. So defining it like that is great. That, that's good. Because exhortation, I'm looking here, exhortation, the, the, I'm going to put a little bit of Greek on here, but so don't, we, we, we get this idea from um, uh, the, 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 the Greek word is, Parakaleo, or um, th this is like um, I'll do it in English. Uh, para, para, it's parakaleo, which para is, so 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 depending on how you understand this word. So this word can mean to urge. So it's very close. Let me see something here. Is this the word used in Greek? Was that the word used in Greek? Hold on. Yeah, it's a paracaleo. Oh, then, then yeah. So then, 
I didn't even yeah. see that. Yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, so let's, so let's go with this. Let's go with that. Yeah, let's go with that. That's good. Yeah. Is that, is that where you got it from? Sunny? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I didn't even know that was the one. I forgot. That's really good. That's really good. I, yeah. I was not, I was and, not. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and it's in evocative, evocative sense. So, yeah, I appeal to you or something like that. Or I yeah, no, no, you. that's good. That's good. No, and actually, that's really good. I, 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 I've studied this passage before. I just forgot that was the Greek word. No, I, I think we should definitely go with this one. I definitely think we should go with this one because, because uh, even in Hebrews, the, the author of Hebrews says to bear with this word of exhortation. So uh, exhortation has a different range of, of meaning. And if Paul is using this, he's using this in the, the appeal sense, but we should stay as close as possible to the original as, as possible. So I, I like that. So parakaleo, just really basic, can mean urge. It can mean uh, comfort. It, and it can also mean to exhort. And exhort is, is like a, is like a, um, is like a, like in a preaching or calling someone to do something like that, calling. So no, let's let's use this word. I like it. Let's use let's use um. Let's use this one here. So Sonny gets the gold star. Sonny gets the gold star for tonight. Um, Yay. <laughs> but, this, but just making sure it, we, we, we as pastors, as church leaders, this word has a, this is a range of meaning. And there's also this meaning of encourage here as well. Okay. So there's a range of meaning. Parakaleo is a very uh, a fundamental concept for pastors, for leaders. Okay. And so in this sense, in this sense, it is, it's, it's in this appeal sense, okay? An urging sense, all right? So, but I like using that word because that, that, that is a good word. That's the word. It's good to use. Okay, great. All right, so we have it. We have it. We're going to use uh, exhort. So let me just erase that. Oops. Okay. Down here, what are the two major kinds of, what are the two major kinds? Danny, go ahead. It's a prohibition, do not be conformed. And the command be transformed. Prohibition and then also a command. Great. So there is a, there is a, there is a negative here and then there's also a positive, right? So you're going to hear people say, I just focus on the positives, just focus on the positive, right? But in scripture, oftentimes there's always a contrast there. The negative is contrasted with the positive. Okay. So I just gave it away. I just gave the answer here. The relationship here is is a contrast. Okay. Great. Excellent job. Now, now here's the question. This is the this is the the question here. The prescription. Now hold on here. Okay, there is there there is the there is the question here. I uh, my pen is messing up. Um, all right, so my question is, what is the relationship? What is this relationship? Now notice there's no conjunction, right? So there is no form that's not available to us. But logically, logically, what is the relationship between these two? What did you have? Anyone want to give a, get, take a crack at it? Idea illustration, Pastor. Okay, so no. So, 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 so someone has idea 
illustration, okay? Meaning to say, this big idea is that illustrated, right? It's that illustrated. There's, there's, a, there's an idea given or, or a concept given, and then there's a specific, there's a specific, uh, this is what it looks like, okay? So that's possible, that's possible. Anyone else? Any other different type, slightly different? Statement. Huh? Like a statement. Okay. Um, so wait, so Danny, just repeat. I, I missed that part that you said. What, what did you say again? It's like a statement. Uh, he's stating the... But we're looking at, it should be a relationship between the two. So I don't think there's a statement in one of those categories. I could be mistaken. A statement would be within the type. But, but so Danny, we're, look, we're, we're past looking at types. Now we're looking at the relationship between the two, okay? Let me pull up the, let me pull up the, the, the handout right here. Esther, general to specific. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I like that even better. I like that even better. I, I, I like that. That is, a, that, that is a good one. That is a good one. So let's just go there really quick. I, did you have that or you just saw it? I was looking at the list uh, and then I was reading definition, alternative contrast. Oh, there's general specific. I, I think it's, you know, it will. And then I kept on reading this verse, the verses, and yeah, it seems to okay. define it more. Yeah. yeah, so let's look at this really quick. Everyone can look at the screen up here. Um, okay, I had it very good. So it's general to, to, to specific. A generic statement. Okay, so this is what, Danny, this is what you're talking about, a, a, a statement. So. Yeah, so in one sense, there is a statement there, okay? But, but there's a relationship between the two. So a generic statement is yeah. provided. Danny, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Specific. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I agree with the uh, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So a general statement is provided, and then a second one provides the details. So this is really what it is. <laughs> it's like, perfect, right? So let's, let's go back here. And then the example here is actually... We studied this before, train yourself for godliness. Well, what does that look like? And then there's a list of commands. So that's often what Paul will say. He'll give a, a, a comprehensive command and, or a, 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 a call to action or some type of statement, and then he's gonna give specific examples. So yeah, let's, let's change this here. I really like that this, I really like what Kay has said. The, the general, and it's going to specific. I like that. So the key, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, so can we, can we also use the word like uh, expansion or exposition of the appeal? Yeah, so the other possibility, if, if did we have expansion here? Let me check. Is that there? Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, if expansion is there, I agree. Was, expansion could also be used. I, I agree. I agree. I like expansion as well. And in some senses, the expansion is very, okay, I don't have expansion there, but you could have expansion. I think the cat, I think expansion's in the, like the intra sentence, but, but again, there's nothing hard and fast. So if, if you wanted to, if you wanted to refer to this as an expansion here, Meaning to say that yeah, I, I, I'm fine with I'm fine with this, this, and this. I'm I'm I, 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 I like that. I like those. The, the key the key is that the key is that you're, you're seeing the first appeal, the first exhortation. The, the second is explaining, is, is, is expanding upon, is giving specific examples. That's good. Okay, um, did anyone try to make an outline or, or not yet? 
That's it. Okay. All right. So let's let's try to make it. Let's let's try to work through this and make, and make an outline here. Let me um. Let me come down here. Just bear with me one second. Okay. So then, what I want to do is, how do I, how do I, come up with. How do I come up with an outline, okay? So what I'm probably going to do, just looking at this, I'm going to, I'm gonna just use, I'll use what color can I use here? I'll use, I'll use uh, pink for my daughter, okay? So I'm gonna have Roman numeral one, and I'm thinking about doing a, this is just me, I, I'll do an, an A, B and perhaps C. I'll do a Roman numeral number two. And this can change. So as we write the outline out, it can change. Okay, it's not hard and fast. All right. Roman number Roman numeral number two. And then I'll have a I'll probably have an I'll probably have a, an, an A and then a B. And then I'll probably have a one and a two. Okay. Is everyone tracking with me? So, so, so this is the one, this is the two, this is there, this is here, and then we have a big idea. Okay. So let me try to write this out and let's see what we do. Let's see what happens here. Okay. So, so number one. Let's think about a main, I want to think about a main idea that enca encapsulates what is being said. So like a summary statement or a summary phrase. So I'm just going to put, we can change this. This is just how I would do it, okay? Um, at practicing, all right? So I would do Paul's exhortation to... Um, Paul's exhortation for our whole lives, uh, Paul's exhortation for the Roman, see, I'm already jumping to homiletic, and, and, and see, but what I'm trying to say is that we will naturally, the more, the better we get at this, we'll just naturally go there, okay? So, so it, this, this, it's, it's a natural pro progression. So Paul's exhortation for the Roman uh, saints, to live their whole lives in worship to God. So we can change that, okay? So I, but do you just see how I'm encapsulating the whole, I, the whole nutshell, okay? I'm including the exhortation. I'm including uh, spiritual worship, and I'm including in some sense the the whole lives in your body is a living sacrifice okay is everyone tracking there with me i'm trying to encapsulate all the all the ideas okay now perhaps you want to include by the mercies of god so paul paul's exhortation for the roman saints roman saints we could always add here now this is kind of wordy, so you do want to you do want to by the time you get to homiletics you want to reduce it down. So uh, because of God's mercies, okay. So we can reduce that later, all right? So Paul's exhortation for the Roman saints to live their whole lives in worship to God because of God's mercies, okay. Or we could actually say let's 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 get let's get more. This is exegetical, okay. Because of the gospel. Because, because, we can discuss this later, Romans 12, 1 and 2 is, is a therefore in relationship, the mercies of God is really the gospel, Romans 1 to 11, which is what God was proclaiming to them, what, what Paul was proclaiming to them. So I'm going to put, because of the gospel, um, 
we could also put it here, mercies of God. Remember, mercy is not getting what you are owed, and so that is the gospel. <laughs> so so I, maybe this is too much homiletical, okay? So maybe I'm already kind of going homiletical, but we do have a context for including the gospel. All right, is everyone tracking with me? We're almost done. It's getting late, okay? Is everyone, is everyone good so far? Good? Okay. All right, so then what I'm just going to do now is I'm just going to say, Uh, a, I just want to say, um, uh, Paul exhorts the Roman saints, or we could say exhorts his brothers in Rome, okay? I'm including Roman saints because they're addressed as saints. So we can use both. We can use brothers and saints. That's being still exegetical, okay? They're called saints. They're also called brothers, okay? So we can flip, we can hop back and forth, all right? This is this not a problem. Okay, B, um, this is on the basis of God's, uh, on, on the basis of the gospel, okay? Now you would want to unpack in your in your teaching portion, in your exposition portion, you want to include an explanation of why we're using gospel. Now, again, maybe I'm jumping too far ahead to homiletical. I would say I'm not. If you want to say this is on the basis of the mercies of God, fair enough. I do think because Paul really highlights the gospel in Romans 1, we saw that in Romans 10, he highlights the word explicitly. And throughout Romans 12 to 16, he'll come back to that. So we could at least say, um, let's say on the basis of the mercies of God, the gospel. That's where I want to go. I want to, I want, that's, that's where I'm going to be. That's where I'm going to be including Christ. Okay. That's where I'm going to be including Christ. Okay. I already, I see that. All right. C, C. Um, uh, let me see how I can do this because I want to say it in my own words. Um, we are to the content of the exhortation is to live our whole lives as as a um Living sacrifice. Yeah, so we could we could say living sacrifice as a as a holy, pleasing, living sacrifice to God. So notice here, notice here. So coming back up to here, do you like that? So we're, 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 we're going to get somewhere. So we're making a connection. Because of Christ's sacrifice, we are also called to sacrifice ourselves. You see that connection? And we saw that in Romans 3. I would, if you're preaching this, and listen, if you want to preach this passage, if you want to use this, then don't feel, don't even mention my name. Just use it, okay? Um, no pressure, but don't feel like, you know, this is, this is for, if, if you want to preach this, anyone, or teach this, or a small group, don't, don't hesitate, okay? Um, but notice the play, our living sacrifice in connection with Christ's sacrifice. So that's, that's a connection we want to make, okay? And, and that's where the mercies of God, remember, mercies of God is in the judgment context. So let me just put one other thing here. Right? Christ is the propitiation, his sacrifice, his blood, his blood. So you want to, if, if I'm preaching this, I'm going to Romans 3, 21 to 26, okay? I'm just, I'm just making a connection there, okay? All right. The content of the exhortation is to live our lives, whole, lives as holy, pleasing, living sacrifices 
sacrifices to God, okay? So that's the first. Now remember, our homiletical will be much more uh, catchy. This is wordy right now. You, you can do wordy. You're trying to get the big idea in your own words, and then you're going to work it down, okay? Um, sometimes if we jump right to homiletical, it gets confusing or, or we miss something, okay? Next, next, number two, number two. Um, the specific uh, way is through transformational thinking. Transformational thinking. The specific way is through transformational thinking. Or a, tra or a transformed mind. You could say transform mind. Transformational thinking, something like that. So, uh, A, A. Do not allow your mind to continue to be guided but or uh, guided or influenced, influenced. influenced. by the world. The world. You see that? Oops. But Do not allow your mind to continue to be guided, or we could say, uh, yeah, that's wordy. We're going to get it down better. We're going to get it down better. But again, this is an exegetical outline, okay? Do not allow your mind to continue to be guided, influenced by the world, okay? Uh, rather, rather be. So look at the word renewal, renewal. Who renews, from our studies before, who renews the image of Christ in us? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So, so, even though the Holy Spirit is not explicit, it is implicit. So, rather, allow, allow the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit to transform and renew uh, okay, hold on, hold on. Rather, allow the Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah, allow the Holy Spirit to transform your mind. So we're combining. Uh, so we can say, be transformed by the Holy Spirit's renewal of your mind. You could also say that, okay? Because even though, so uh, allow the Holy Spirit to transform your mind. Meaning to say that allowing is is us, there's a component for us, and the Holy Spirit, okay? So we're including both ideas here, all right? Everyone tracking with me? So, so even though we are, we are commanded to do this, we cannot do this without God's power. And the power is the Holy Spirit, okay? All right? Um, now, maybe you want to say, Tim, the Holy Spirit's not there. You're eisegetical. Fine, you can say that. I do think it's there in that this renewal of your mind concept. And we know elsewhere in Paul, he talks about we're being renewed to the image of the, of, of, of the sun. We're being conformed to the image of the sun. We're being, the image of the sun is being renewed within us. Okay, so, you know, I do think the Holy Spirit is there. I think it's there in this renewal idea. I, I really do. So, but, but if you don't, that's fine. It's completely fine. You don't have to include that, okay? Provided you're not saying you can do this by yourself. <laughs> You can say you can do this by yourself. <laughs> we can't have that. Okay. C. What do we do here? C. C. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So we, we just want to talk about here. Um, I had two sub points. Okay. So let me see how I can do this. Um, yeah. So really, I'm looking here. The purpose of allowing the Holy Spirit to transform your mind is so that you can discern the will of God, okay? Does everyone see that here? So it's after, it's 
when you allow your mind to be transformed, then you can determine the will of God. Does everyone see what I'm saying there? Ask a question. Is that making sense? So it's, 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 it's more so saying that um, the, the, the purpose of transforming your mind is so that you can determine, so that you can, so that you can know the will of God. So again, maybe this is, maybe this is more of an interpretation. Fair enough. Maybe you disagree. Fair enough. But I, what I want to say here is uh, the purpose for transformational thinking is so that is so that we can know God's will. Okay. Let's take a moment to think about that. If you want to ask a question, if you disagree, that's, let's talk about that. But so what I'm saying is, is that we're giving a purpose. The purpose for transformational thinking is so that we can know the will of God. And then we can say here, Okay, this is rough. We could probably make it better. So again, if you can, if you can think here, when I create a new, a new sub-level, if you can see this, we create a new sub-level here, the, the C becomes a summary, okay? The C becomes a summary. Whenever you create multiple points, one bracket in, that you, you have to have the upper, the upper level as a summary. Is everyone understanding what I'm saying there? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it won't make sense. Your, your order won't make sense. So knowing God's will is the result of transformational thinking. So again, that's a summary of the two specifics. Number one, the purpose of transformational thinking is so that we can know God's will. What is God's will? Okay, so here, so here we are dealing with purpose. Here we're doing with what? Okay. So big takeaway, big takeaway. Okay. Number one, God's will for us will always be good, acceptable, and perfect. All right. So when someone, so when someone comes to you and they say, I think God's will for me is this, and it's clearly a, a, an act of sin then you can know that it's not perfect or acceptable. So the outcome, the outcome. Yeah, the outcome. So you can look at the last as, as either a result or a purpose, okay? So looking at the, at the text itself, this looking forward, looking forward to here, it's a purpose, okay? If you're looking back, I, I'm right now thinking in time, okay? I, I'm thinking in time. It can be a result in the sense that we can speak of it. If you're looking at something in the past, it's a result, okay? So I can say, what's the purpose of transformational thinking? So that we can know the will of God, okay? If I'm looking at knowing the will of God, I can say, knowing the will of God is the result from a transformed life. You see how, in one sense, I'm looking... Maybe I'm looking back this way. <laughs> so it's confusing. Does everyone see what I'm saying? So, so imagine this. Imagine this. Let's go here. Let's think here. So transformed, transformed thinking, right? This leads to knowing that we love God. God's will. So looking forward, it's the purpose. Looking back, it's the result. 
Does that make sense? Is everyone tracking with me? This is really good, uh, you know, really good theological, there is a really good theological uh, concept there that is really true to Christian life. Yeah. Yeah, the purpose and the, the purpose and the result. So, so Tim, I was, I was looking on the word study on the word will of God and the word perfection. Actually, it's the same, you know, it's the same, uh, you know, meaning in the original language. <laughs> <laughs> the perfection, uh, I mean, the, the same kind of root words like yeah. you know, will and the perfection. So, uh, when we designate this as the result of of the, the the purpose or the goal of the knowing God or knowing the will of God, uh, the result will be perfection. The will of God that is good, that is fully agreeable, and that is that would result perfection. It's bringing to completion. It's bringing to completion. <laughs> yeah, it's bringing, yeah, it's bringing to completion. And so this is where this is where no excellent, Sonny. So Romans eight. Romans 8 becomes so important because the Bible, Romans 8, he has those who he foreknew, he called. Those who he called, he justified. Those who he justified, he glorified. glorified right? The last is glorified. So, so it's coming to perfection. And so we're in the middle right now. We're after justification before perfection. So I, excellent observation, Sonny. That, that just caused me to think about Romans 8. So excellent Excellent yeah, connection yeah. here. Excellent, Josh. And 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 it, it really leads me to the, the first appeal, you know, the appeal of of Paul, which is including the body, because we have the mindset that only the the soul is not including the body. You <laughs> know, the perf the perfect is soul and not including the body, but biblically, doctrinally, Christ, you know, in in a Christ, in a biblical concept and in a biblical teaching of of perfect perfection. Is always include the body, and ha it has it has to be that way because you know one day our body will be changed into a glorified body. Yeah. And for the time being, we are urged by Apostle Paul, the Romans, who is uh, you know surrounded by immoralities and many kinds of those things, are encouraged to are urged by or exhorted by Apostle Paul to offer their body as a living sacrifice because. And one, one of the things that they have to do is to renew their mind so that they will know the, the will of God, which is leads to this kind of perfection. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so, and so it's, it's, uh, if, if you're looking at the human, human being, the mind is internal, the body is external. So you're right. It's not this dualistic view. It's this in, inward, outward, number one, sign number two. I like what you're saying about it's not just spiritual, it's physical. And, and it's individual, and it's also in the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And so that's the last thing here. Verse three st talks about gifts. Uh, Verse 3 talks about gifts in the body of Christ, and it's the gifts of the Spirit. So that's where I'm getting spirit from. <laughs> I was going to come back to that. Wow. So, so really, in preaching Romans 12, 1 and 2, you have to also consider the preceding context and succeeding context. That's why if you were to do a, a, a paper on this, the preceding context would give you the gospel. The succeeding context in Romans 12, look at it, 3 to 8. It's in the body of Christ using your gifts. And so people will say to me, we talked about this before in, in, in uh, Christianity 102 or actually in uh, the operations manual, well, what is the will of God? You know, how do I know the will of God? Well, in this context, the will of God concerns using your gifts. The, what, what is this will of God focused upon in this context? It's the gifts in the body of Christ. It's not dealing with who you're going to marry. It's not dealing with 
some other thing. Now, again, that's not to say that we can't apply this to those other contexts, but this is in the context of using our gifts, determining our gifts and using them in the body of Christ. Okay. So, so much, so much, so much to, to consider. I, 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 I don't want us to lose track of this purpose in the broader context. If you notice here, we went from an intra, we went from an intra to enter, and then this is an exe, this is an exegetical outline. And then all we need to do now is we would just need to do the exegetical summary, which I'm not going to do tonight. All right. And then if you think about it, again, all that's left, all that's left now is to make theological conclusions and then to write and explain the text in your own words and then you're going to create a theological outline and summary, and then you're on to homiletics and just preparing your, your sermon to preach. And, and so, so once you get to this structure analysis, after that, you sh once you've wrestled through the structure analysis, the rest should be cake. The rest should be cake. And if you notice here, Sonny is running with, with a lot of uh, observations. Others are making observations. Um, if you really spend your time understanding the text, doing the word studies, doing the structure analysis, doing the background studies, doing the context studies, your homiletics, your teaching outline, your, it's just going to be there. It's going to be there. It's, it's going it's to be like picking low-hanging fruit. It's like picking low-hanging fruit. You know, it's going to be so easy. If you don't do that hard work at first, if you don't do the hard work at first, then, then your homiletics is very mahira and, and, and your, your outline might not be what the text is saying because you haven't done that effort to really understand what the text is saying. And then you, when someone sees an outline like this, they're just like, I have confidence with what he's saying because I know that's what the text is saying. And, and, and if you're a teacher, if you're a pastor, you know, some, you know, there's a, there's a, there's pastors in the U S that commit suicide because they're so stressed over coming up with something original. No need, <laughs> no need. If you just let the text speak, you will have so much original content. People will be so amazed and it, will, and, it will, and, it will, and it won't be because of you. It'll be because the spirit is speaking through you and the word of God. Amen. Any comments or questions or, or does this make sense? We've, we've done two examples now. Anyone want to make co a comment or, or add a question or make an observation? Yeah, Tim. Um, getting the, uh, the big picture, how to prepare. That has been my uh what I do before every time I make a <laughs> make a sermon I don't know where to begin so this is the, the doing the main frame first and then the we can everything follows so now I haven't really done my my own uh Using my own sermon, using this, but we'll try. I'll try. You know, that will be my. That will be the challenge. Yeah. So I want. Okay. Yeah. So I want everyone to do an intra sentence analysis, an inter sentence. I'll send the emails out tonight after I get off the video call with you. And yeah, when if you're preaching or teaching, if someone's gonna give you, maybe tell your pastor. Listen, you cannot. Give it to me the week before. I want a month in advance and, and try to do this process. I think you will find this very beneficial and you'll become very good at it. I'm also yeah. good. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. And just, uh, you know, it comes to my mind that uh, 
uh, when we do this thing, you know, the inter and the intra structure, and then we, you know, we can get exegetical outline from, from those um, observations. I just realized that, um, you know, the, 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 the background studies is just easy as, you know, as it, it will be because, um, you know, the, the moment we see the structure and the message of, of this passage, of the passage that we are working, uh, we could ask the question, so why, does, why did Paul say this? What is the context? What is the, the background of this, of this passage? So now we could go to a, you know, introduction to, to the New Testament or introduction to the book and study there, study the background and the historical background, the city and the Roman background. And then we can, oh, so there, there are a lot of aha moments, actually. Yeah. Yeah. All, and yeah, it's really helpful for pastors and teachers. Yeah. And, and the other thing, too, is that if you're, if you're preaching, especially for the pastor, if you're preaching expositional preaching, this is actually very doable. So this comes back to Henry's question. Is Henry still here? I, I, maybe I lost him. Oh, Henry's there, yeah. Um, about taking, like, a long time. If you're if you're if you're doing this uh, expositional in a book, all of those first studies are done just one time at the beginning of the book, and then pretty much you can just each passage you're just going right into you're going right into the uh, you're going right into the context study. You've already done the background study. You've already done the um, um, uh, Part of the context study, you're just adding one new, because it's just one new passage each week as you work through the book, and then you're going right into observations and questions, and then word study, structure analysis, and then from there, you're, you're ready to really start making your outline. And so uh, this is, I think, doable if you're doing expositional preaching. If you're doing topical, it, it will be very difficult. It will be very difficult. Yeah, yeah true. I agree. 